Hello and welcome. My name is Dylan J. Walker, and today I'm just going to be going over some techniques for creating tileable sprites. Uh, so let's just get started. Uh, we're going to be doing it all in Pscool, which is just a free app that you can use on uh, in browser or you can download it. It's open source, so anyone can uh, contribute to the code, and it's just a really good way of making free pixel art. Um, so we're just going to work at the default size, which is 32 by 32. And we'll start off just with a technique that I've already shown in another video, which is best for really simple um, tileable sprites. So we'll just do a brick wall. So all you want to do is put in some lines. And now that we have one at the top and the bottom, you want to keep in mind this gap. Because we want to have a similar size gap between the rest of the bricks. So that should be good. Um, so yeah, with this technique, it's just for really simple ones. So all you're doing is keeping the entire thing in mind. So we know that this edge needs to meet up with this edge. So we know that this here will become one thing. Um, it might be a little big, but so if we come in and put a line in here, we know that if we have a line there, we need to have a line here. And if we have a line here, then we need to have a line there. And then on the edges, we just want to make sure we don't have really small bricks. So if we put a line here, we want to make that brick probably about that big. So we want it to meet up in the middle of this one. And then we can just continue with doing that. So you get something like that. And then we can just resize it to test it. So we'll go to three times the size and resize it. And then we'll just grab our picture, control C to copy, and then paste it around it to test it. Cool. So now we can see that we have a pretty good tile texture. Um, we can just control Z, go back to the original one, and paint it quickly. I'm just going to do it red, seeing that's the color that was there. Come and get a lighter, a darker color, I mean. And we'll just put in some dark parts. Oops. Again, we just need to keep in mind the fact that everything's going to be tiled. Then we'll come in and grab a lighter color. Well, first we'll go back to our medium color, then we'll grab a light color. Let's chuck this in at the tops. This is basically the same as what I did for the How to Create a Endless Runner tutorial series I'm currently making. Uh, this is how we made the background art. Um, after this, I'll show you a technique for making a little bit more complicated tiles. But yeah. Okay, so now that we have that, we'll just have a look at it again. So come in here, change the scale, resize, select our texture, And then we have a wall. Positioned that one a little bit wrong, but yeah, that's fine. So now that we have that one, I'll show you another technique. So we'll just create, go to a new window, and start on a new one. So this technique's for a little bit more complicated sprites. Um, so we're just going to make a dirt sprite, just as an example, but we're going to make it 
pretty complex. And to do that, we're just going to use the lighten tool, but we're going to hold control to darken, and we're just going to darken everything. And we just want to try and get this as even as possible. So I might fast forward this a little bit and just go over all these spots, and then I'll come back and try and make it a little bit better. Okay, so now that we have it at this point, um, we can see we have some areas that are a little bit too dark. One thing I should say is that the lighten tool works off the speed of the mouse. Somehow I've just corrupted that color, so I'm just going to remove it. And just put this color in its place. And then we can go back to the darken tool. So basically all we want to do now is look up at this little picture and try and fix up a few of these little dark spots. Just make it a little bit more uniform. Yeah, so we'll just keep it at that for now. Um, so now here comes the actual technique. So we'll come to our select tool. Uh, this is a little bit easier in Photoshop, but we can still do it pretty easily in here. What we want to do is we basically want to cut this image into four and then we want to have it so that only, well, so we want to cut it into four and then we want to take this corner and put it down here and we want to put this one up here and we want to put this one down here and we want to put that one up there. And basically all it's going to do is it's going to put the edges from the inside on the outside and the edges from the outside on the inside. Um, should make a little bit more sense in a sec. So we'll just resize our picture again. Actually, we won't resize it just yet. We'll come down and select a corner. So when we have our selection, when we're selecting it, uh, you can only see it when it's selecting. So if you just have a look down here when I'm doing this, you can see that it says 32 times 32, and then it has some few other things like the um, pixel that you're currently on and all that kind of stuff. All we want to look at is the thing in the brackets where it currently says 15 by 15. Because our picture is 32 by 32, excuse me, um, we know that each section would be 16 by 16. So we just need to get those brackets to say 16 by 16 from the corner. And then we just need to cut it. So control X instead of control C, create a new layer, and then paste it onto there. So now we'll just repeat this process. Except now we can be based off the one that we've already taken, so we can just go like that. Cut it, make a new layer, put it in there. Come in, grab another one, new layer. And then the last one we don't need to do anything because it's on its own layer now. So now we'll come through and layer by layer we'll switch all these over. And so as you'll see, at the moment this edge is on the inside and this edge is on the outside. When we move it down to here, the inside edge has moved to the outside and the outside edge has moved to the inside. So we're just going to do that to each of the layers. And then we can merge them all. Whoops, not make new layers, we want to merge them. And then if you look up here, you can see our sprite. Um, it looks pretty good, but there's a few little things we can fix. So we'll come and um, we'll fix up this little spot here because now this is where we're going to have our inconsistency because we already made sure the outside edge was seamless by making it so the center was. And now that that's on the outside, all we need to do is not touch this out of it here and our tile should be fine. So if we just come in and change the center up a little bit, maybe make these ones a little bit darker. And then we come in and resize our canvas. Do the same thing as before. It can help do the corners in this case first because whoops, because um, 
that way it's easier just to find where the tile actually goes. So I've positioned one of them wrong. And then if we look up here, we can see we're starting to have a little bit better results. We still have a few little things that could probably be cleaned up. So we can tell that there's a little bit of a white spot here, which is making a bit of an issue. So if we just come in, and we'll just make this area a little bit darker. So come back to our darken. And then there was a few lines throughout the texture that were missing from here. So we'll just add them. And now we'll have a quick look at that. This is the part that is a lot easier in Photoshop, but still very doable in free software. Yeah, cool. So now if we have a look back up here, we can see that we're starting to get a lot better results. There's a few little things we could probably still fix up, but that is the basic technique for making more complex um, tiled sprites, and then you'll just go through that process until you get something that you're really happy with. Um, I hope this was a pretty helpful video. Um, depending on if I get enough likes and stuff, I might do a follow-up video to this on creating tiled sets. So creating one texture and then out of that making multiple textures. Oh, I'll just give you a quick example. If we just go to my desktop for a second. Uh, this is a game I'm currently working on. And as you can see the road here. See how I have the corners and stuff? All of that is made out of just one texture. So I have one texture here and then here and here and here. And then I've just got another copy of the texture here which has a few blocks removed to make corners and stuff like that. So I might do a follow-up video on the best ways to go about creating tiled sets and all that kind of stuff. So if you found this video helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, just leave a comment, and same if there's any videos you'd like to suggest for the future. Uh, have a good day, and I'll see all of you guys next time.